one. Introduction to the, okay, to the class. As we go on, if you have any question, let me know. Because this is the tool that we're going to use, okay? And and on with this beautiful function, okay? There you are. In, uh, in mathematics, especially in applied mathematics, we have a couple of, of these type of functions, okay? This is the first one. This is the most popular one. There are a couple of more, okay? So this is going to be 7.1, and the function is going to be Laplace. Okay, Laplace transform. Maybe they say Laplace, but the French pronunciation is Laplace. Okay, that's it. We need improper integral. So we will recall that one first, okay, from calculus two, because we need that one through this uh, chapter. So we recall that. Thank you. Find the infinite integral. Recall that if a G, if a G is going to be a function, okay, it's going to be a function defined for positive numbers, of zero and positive infinity. Improperly. Proper zero to infinity. It's a passive infinity, we like infinity to be passive. G of T, D of T, T rather than X, because there's going to be application problems. Okay? So this, you know that we'll replace the infinity by something, we call it B, we find the integral, and then we, we take the, okay, this is it. So the improper integral is going to be defined. Defined by, so it's gonna be integral from zero to infinity or passive infinity, G of T, D of T is equal to the limit of, Change this infinity into the b, but then we take the limit, then b goes to positive infinity, integral of zero to b, g of t, d of t. Okay, this is the way we are going to define this proper, proper integral. If the, the limit exists, we say the integral is convergent or converges. Okay, if limit. Then it exists in the integral, then integral from zero to infinity, which dt t, t converges. Okay, converges, otherwise, okay, otherwise the integral, integral does not exist. And that's the definition of the improper integral. We don't need anything else. So let's uh, talk about the, the part that we need. Okay, give you one example. You have to do it for us for a, for a time being, a couple of hours. And so we want to evaluate, for example, this one. Evaluate integral from zero to infinity. 1 over 2x plus 1 all square dx. Want to do this one? <coughs> okay, so we have to switch it first and then take the, take the integral. So the solution is going to be that's it. We start with the definition integral from 0 to infinity. Okay, that's it. Zero from zero to infinity, one over two x plus one squared dx will be equal to the limit of b goes to infinity. I mean positive infinity. Integral from zero to b. Okay, zero to b, one over two x plus one 
or the square dx. That's a definition. No integrated. You know with that. So we can do it separately or just continue with the limit part. So integral from zero to p. So this is going to be a two x plus one to the negative two dx. You can use the u substitution. Okay, if you take this one to be u, so your u prime would be two or the du would be two. So I'm going to create a two. So I divide the outside by two and then I multiply the inside by two and the zero to b. So this would be a two x plus one to the negative two. And then I have a two dx. Okay. So as you can see, this is going to be u, and this is going to be du. So I have to integrate the u to the negative two du, if you like, which is u to the negative one over negative one. Okay, so I go on. So it's going to be one half, negative half, equals to positive infinity. <coughs> so that would be two x plus one to the negative one, okay, over negative one. And x is going to be from zero to p. Okay, substitute and integrate. Let's take the limit. It's going to be one half limit of. Okay, limit of b goes to infinity. Switch it first. It's going to be negative one, two x plus one, going from zero to p. So it's going to be one half limit of negative one, two b plus one, b goes to positive infinity, minus negative one, we substitute to zero, so let me be zero plus one. <coughs> yes, okay. Yes. Uh, so if we get to use sub, then we have to redefine the limits of integration? No, 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 because I didn't substitute. <coughs> oh. Okay. So that's going to be the one. So if p goes to infinity, this would be zero. This would be zero. Okay. So negative, negative would be positive. So that would be that would be. Negative. Okay. So basically, the result mm -hmm. is going to be that. The result would be one. Because the inside that gives zero minus negative one is a positive one. So the integral is equal to the one half and integral converges. Okay. So integral from zero to infinity, one over two x plus one over the square dx is equal to and then we do. And you are going to start doing this one for a couple of minutes for us. We're getting to the full. So, okay, so let's remind you the, the truth of the improper incorporate. Any question? Now let's get to the Laplace run. The Laplace transform is a special function that's defined by a improper integral. Okay, so this is going to be one. You know, when this integral is converging, the result is a number. So what we're going to do is we are going to introduce this uh, function. For you, okay, so what's going to be definition that we're going to consider <coughs> for the Laplace transform? With the definition, you see, you know that any function is is a machine. That machine would have input and output. In this form, we are going to have a machine. Okay, this machine is Laplace transform machine. This is a special function. We are going to denote this one by L of, this is the way I write the L. Laplace, okay, lowercase L, if you like, L of F of T. You see the, I'm going to drop, a function would be given to me. So I drop f of t into this Laplace transform, Laplace operator. Like when you drop the t, you say g of t, f of t. So this is Laplace of f of t. Okay, then uh, the result, what's gonna be the, okay, what's gonna be the output? The output would be defined by this uh, improper integral. So Laplace of f of t is going to be equal to that integral from zero to infinity. When I write infinity, I mean possible infinity. Okay, zero infinity, e to the negative st, lowercase s, f of t, d of t. This is gonna be definition of a Laplace transform. 
Okay, L of T is going to be zero to infinity, E to the negative S T F A D T. Uh, of course, uh, if that, uh, so, so in this, uh, look at the integral that we have. You take the integral respect to the T. So when you substitute, there is another parameter here. That parameter is S. So when you simplify everything, this result would be a function of S. What is S? S is a real variable, okay? So officially we have to provide the, okay, the property for the F so that we'll be able to do it. This is it. So official definition is this one, if a function. Okay, if a function F is going to be defined. Okay, defined on this interval, zero and positive infinity for the positive number. Then, and then the Laplace transform. Then Laplace transform. Okay, Laplace transform. Laplace transform of F is going to be denoted by, okay, the, I denoted by L Laplace of F of T. Presentation that I want to use, okay. And is going to be defined by that in property. And is defined, okay, defined by this uh, in proper integral, Laplace of f of t equal to the zero to infinity e to the negative st ft dt. Okay, it's going to be defined with this one. Now, you know that this improper integral may exist or may not. When you introduce it as a function, as a Laplace transform, you have to guarantee that this does exist, okay? So the guarantee is going to be when you, when you try to find this improper integral, at the end, there is going to be an S here. So you may have to impose some condition on S to make sure that this integral does exist, okay? Besides, the one to the right is the function of S. Let me just explain this. So note that, very important observation. Note that the, the Laplace transform, L of F of T, okay, is going to be a function, is a function, okay, a function of the variable S, <coughs> real variable, real variable, it's a number, <coughs> real variable S. So if you like, the result usually write it down as L Laplace of F of T is a function of S. We usually write it down, you have to follow this notation. This is a unique one. Usually write on uppercase F, it's gonna be F of S. So the function to start with is gonna be function of T, but when you take the Laplace transform, always Laplace transform is gonna be a function of S. Now the question is going to be, what is the domain of this function? What's the domain of f of s? So how are we going to get f of s? You get f of s if this, uh, is, if this improper integral uh, does exist. So improper integral it depends on s. So you may have to impose some condition on s so that this improper integral that exists. So the domain of the f of s and those values of s for which the improper integral converges are going to be the same thing. Okay, it's going to be f of s. So the domain of this function, the domain of the of the function of f of s is going to be is the set. Okay, it's going to be the set of all numbers, real numbers, or all values, numbers values of the variable S for which that proper integral exists, for which the improper integral, the improper integral exists. Okay, so, so this means, you know, the integral uh, or integral from zero to infinity 
E to the negative S T F T D T in fact it converges. So uh, you cannot right away say what is the domain of this function. You have to find it first, then in order to find it, you may have to impose some condition to force this integral to be okay to be convergent. So so that, that gives you the freedom of you know freedom of how you're going to make this integral 100 percent converges. So any restriction that gives you the domain of the domain of the bank. Okay, so this is uh, like a machine for the time being. Okay, we have a nice machine. We drop the function in it and we get the result. Uh, there are going to be you know, formulas, tables, or most of the functions that are going to do for us. Okay, the basic one. And we give you one table. Okay, one table contains all of them. You don't have to memorize it. And as we go on, you get used to it, that you memorize it automatically. Okay. But some of them, you have to find it for us, okay? So you have to know the method and at the same time, carry the, carry the table with you. So I'm going to give you some motivation of some of those formulas that we're going to use, okay? And in your book at the previous, as the first section, some of the formulas, they ask you to prove it. So be ready for it. Okay, let's get to know this function. So what is the easiest function that we can use? Okay, example. You give you some function and we want to find the Laplace transfer. <clears throat> and you are going to do all of them when you want to solve eventually one differential equation. And that's the talk. And you have to wait. Find the Laplace. Okay, Laplace transform. Laplace transform of each function. Of each function. That's it, first one. The easiest function that you have is just f of x, f of t equal to what? What's the Laplace of one? See if you can find the Laplace of one, then we can find the Laplace of five, six, seven. It's like differentiation. You need to go with the constant function, okay? Power rule, etc. Okay, let's do it. We have the formula. So this is it, solution. So uh, solution is going to be, you see your f of t, f of t is equal to what? Bring the formula. What's the formula? Laplace of f of t is going to be integral from zero to infinity e to the negative st f t d t. Substitute. f of t is one. So that gives you zero to infinity Okay, e to the negative st times one dt. So you end up with the integral of zero to infinity, e to the negative st dt. You want to find this integral. You know that it's improper integral. Change it to the limit and go for it. So it's gonna be equal to the limit r. Change the infinity to the b, b goes to infinity. Integral from zero to b e to the negative st dt. Easy integral to find. It's going to be limit r. e goes to positive infinity. You know that exponential function never change. So it's going to be e to the negative st again. And you have to divide it by u prime. Differential respect to the t. Derivative of negative st would be negative s. So divided by, okay, divide by negative s. You see, this is one of the restrictions that you have. The restriction is you divided by S, make sure that S is not equal to zero. And we continue to see if we need more restriction and then take care of it. Any question? Exponential function never change. You differentiate respect to the T that give you negative S, divide by negative S. But now T goes from, T goes from zero to B. And so you substitute first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this one down. And then I substitute, it's going to be limit of e goes to positive infinity. It is a negative sign. I put the negative here. So it's going to be one over s e to the st, then zero to b. It's easier to work with. Now I substitute, it's going to be limit of e goes to positive infinity. You substitute the b first. So that's going to be negative 
negative one over S e to the T is equal to the B. So S B a minus minus one over, when you replace the T by zero, it's gonna be S times e to the e to the zero. Okay, this is how we substitute. Any question? Remember you substitute for T. You substitute for T. Now uh, we are going to, uh, to get this one. Uh, now you have to work on the first one. One over S e to the S P B goes to infinity. Remember you want to force this uh, integral to be convergent. If you want to force integral to be convergent, you must try to find the limit of this expression over here, okay? You must force this limit to be zero, of course, because you have the exponential function down the denominator. What is gonna be the restriction that you have to impose in order to make sure that this limit when b goes to infinity is equal to the zero? Any suggestion? What restriction on s? Yes? S to be positive. Excellent, s to be positive. You have to keep it down. As long as it's done, it's a problem. Okay, infinity down the number would be zero. So we make a note that S must be positive. This is where what I talk about it. Whatever restriction you need, you can impose now and you get to this part. Okay, so this would be zero if S positive and E to the zero is one. Okay, E to the zero is one. So what's going to be the result now? So it's going to be equal to. It's going to be equal to that the first part would be zero. And the second one, they can make it would be positive, would be plus one s, and the result would be one s. So you arrive at the first formula for the Laplace transform, that you have to memorize it. The Laplace transform of one is going to be one over s. One over s, of course, the condition is s greater than equal to the zero. <laughs> That's the one. And we usually say the Laplace of one is one over s. Then the domain is, we say, the natural domain. The domain that we need to be able to. Yes. Is the reason why it needs to be uh, greater than zero because the limits from uh, zero to infinity? That, that's it. No, you see, because that exponential part e is positive. Okay. So in order this integral to this limit to be zero, you must because exponential function is going to be infinity. Okay. Uh, so you have to make sure that that infinity is stay down the denominator. You see, because if a, S is negative, infinity would be on the top. Uh, integral would be divergent. Actually. So you keep it down there, okay? So, but basically we say L, Laplace of one is one over S. Okay, one over S and we create the, the first formula. Okay, any question? We are going to use it quite a lot. Okay, quite a lot. Uh, that's the first one. Wait for the second one. The second one is the most popular one that we are going to use, okay? Then what is Laplace of exponential function? E to the negative three T. Check this one. <coughs> okay, just go with the definition, solution. So your F of T is equal to the E to the negative three T. So F of T, so go with the Laplace transform formula. We know it is going to be Laplace of e to the negative three t is equal to the integral zero to infinity e to the negative s t f e to the negative three t d t. Okay. Now simplify this first, and then go for the limit. It's going to be zero to infinity. Okay, you know that you add the exponent negative st minus uh, 3t dt. Okay, I pull out the t or the negative t as a factor, then I start taking the zero to infinity e to the, okay, e to the, I pull out the negative t. So the inside I get s plus three, dt. Okay, you have to do this one eventually. So we do it now. Now take a, write it down as a limit, then integrate it. You know that you cannot integrate it as is. So it's gonna be limit of B goes to positive infinity, integral from zero to B, zero to B, E to the negative T, S plus three, okay, DT. Now from now on, it's gonna be like the previous one that we did. 
the integrated exponential function never change, but u prime is going to be negative s plus three this time. So it's going to be equal to limit up, okay, limit up, b goes to infinity, okay, b goes to infinity, this is it, that's going to be e to the negative t times s plus three, okay, s plus three, and then uh, down the denominator again with the negative s plus three. Then you have to go on from zero to b and b to infinity. Okay, it would be very much like the previous one. You bring it down, the first part would be zero, and the second part would be the, the solution that we need to find. Okay, so I go on and change it a little bit. It's a limit of b goes to infinity. So it's gonna be a negative again here. Okay, I bring it down e to the... Okay, this is going to be the, the case. Okay, so this is gonna be uh, S plus three. S plus three, the top is gonna to be like the, the previous one that we did. If you substitute that, give you a negative B times S plus three. Okay, and minus, uh, if you put the zero, so that you have a negative one over negative S plus three. Okay. Well, as we did for the other one, we bring this one down, this would be zero, and the result eventually would be one over S plus three. I have to go to the next page. Any question? So just the algebra, bring the first one down, guarantee that it stayed on, and it's like the previous one, negative, negative, positive. In the previous one, you get a positive one over S, now we get one over S plus, S plus three. So if you want to write down one more step, see it clearly, but otherwise it's done. <coughs> so you see it's gonna be equal to the limit R. We can bring the exponential part down so that you have one negative S plus three times E to the, okay, E to the B times S plus three. That's the first part. And the second part would be one over S plus three. Okay, that's it. Uh, and B goes to positive. Again, uh, you have to guarantee that uh, this is stay down here. In order to guarantee, again, B is positive. So what you need is this time, you have to make sure that S plus three is positive. If so, restriction would be S plus three to be positive, okay? Which is uh, the same as S to be greater than negative three. So in that case, this would be zero. The denominator would be infinity. And the leftover would be simply, so this is gonna be equal to the one over S plus three. Then again, you prove a very famous formula that the Laplace of uh, e to the negative three t okay, is equal to the one over s plus three. Okay, of course, with the condition that the s to be greater than negative, negative three. Okay, any question? Now we can make a formula. Let's see if we can do it. So if you want to make a formula in general, very famous formula, okay. What is the Laplace of e to the a t? A is the number. If you compare it with the top, what's going to be the formula? See the top, it's a negative three, you get s plus three. So when it's a, so it's going to be one, one over s minus a. One over s minus a with the condition that the s must be greater than so the Laplace transform of the exponential function, Laplace of e to the a t. e to the a t would be one over s minus two. So Laplace of e to the two t, one over s minus two. Laplace e to the negative five t, one over s plus five. Okay, very, very interesting and easy formula to go on. Okay, any question? That's the second one. You can go on, review calculus, okay, calculus two to get the next two, but I give you the formula. Okay, so that was number two. Number three is this famous function. Okay, we just give you the formula. Laplace of sine of the 80. It's one of the problem in your book, they ask you to do it. If you substitute that, get that famous problem from calculus two. 
integral of e to the okay e to the two x sine of the five x. You know that use integration by part by unit. But uh, we are going to just get that as a formula. So uh, this will be a over a the coefficient over s squared plus a squared. I'm sure that we are going to use it over and over and over. A is the coefficient. A is the coefficient, the bottom one is s squared plus a squared. It's not difficult to do it. It takes time to do those integration methods. Okay, that's the number three. Then, uh, of course, number four is the cosine. You can use the differentiation data to find it. Cosine of the 80. A cosine, uh, for the cosine is different. The top would be S over S squared plus A squared. So that would be the fourth formula. In that table that I gave you, this is the one, or you can make it this formula for yourself. Okay, that's going to be sine of 80, cosine of 80 to get this number. Mm, okay. Uh, in your book, uh, in calculus too, I don't know whether you have to understand it or not. Have you seen hyperbolic function? Calculus 2, calculus 1. Yeah, something, you know, we skip it. And that would be very useful here. You know, you can just, uh, you know, the, the sine hyper of X, okay, or of T, sine hyperbolic. You know that the trigonometric function or circular function, sine square plus cosine square to the one, X square plus Y square to the one. You can use the hyperbola and to find these hyperbolic functions. Okay, hyperbola is going to be X square minus Y square to the one. So there is a change of the sign. And you can bring a new geometry to get this. This would help you if you know this formula. A couple of places, if you know it, that would be easier. Okay, but it's optional. It's not. So uh, in the case of the sine hyper, this is the definition of a sine hyper. The sine hyper is going to be e to the e to the t minus e to the negative t divided by two. The cosine hyperbolic of t is going to be e to the t plus e to the negative t divided by two. Mm -hmm. If you find the cosine square minus sine square, that would be one. Then you can define the tangent hyper, you know, secant hyper, etc. If you're heading for engineering discipline, they use this one quite a lot. Okay, so we have to know it. So I let you do use it, you know, in this course. So I give you the five. Well, the Laplace transform of the sine hyper of hyperbolic of AT is going to be sine hyper is going to be A over S square minus A square. Is the going to be one. And if you want to use the cosine hyper of the AT, so that gives you S over S square minus A. We are going to have some other method to find this method of partial fractions, like in calculus too. It's good to know it, they are available. Okay, so uh, a group of problems. You know, the differential equation mostly end up with the sine of the 2t, cosine of the 2t. So these are going to be used. And this is it, I need one more. The rest, we can find it. But these are going to be there. Okay, are ready for the next one? For the next one to motivate it, uh, how about the power function? Like when you differentiate the of x to the n and x to the n minus one over the Laplace of the uh, t to the n. So let's try one of them and then we are going to extend it. Okay. So let's find out what is going to be the Laplace of Laplace of t. Give an idea. <coughs> Let me extend it. So in this case, uh, f of t is equal to t of t is equal to t. So uh, write the formula. So we're heading for Laplace of t. <coughs> Laplace of t would be zero to infinity. Okay, zero to infinity. e to the negative st, f, f is t, t, d, t. Okay, that's the one. So this is gonna be zero to infinity. I rewrite it as t, e to the negative st, d, t. Okay, so we have to change it to the limit, and then of course, integration by parts, but you can use integration by part, those tabular method to find it right. Okay, the limit of the B goes to infinity, zero to B, okay, zero to B, then the T E to the negative ST dt. 
Okay. You know that T e to the negative S T D T integration by part. Let's do it. We're done. Go to the next page to do this one. Quickly, we can do it by table. Two minutes. Okay, two steps, of course. Okay, so this is it. And let's find out what is the integral of integral of zero to b t e to the negative s t d t. Remember, this is going to be your table. Uh, so this is going to be the sign part, and this is prime, and this is the integration. So we put the sign positive t, then e to the negative s t. Second one, the sign negative, you differentiate t, that give you one. You integrate e to the negative s t respect to the t. So that give you e to the negative s t divided by u prime, which is a negative s. Okay, you continue, this sign would be positive. Derivative of one would be zero. You integrate in that, give you e to the negative s t divided by negative s. You already got the negative s here. So that give you s squared. Square. Okay, so put them together. So what's going to be the result? Zero to b t e to the negative s t d t is going to be equal to <clears throat> okay. So in this case, you are going to have a, a t e to the negative s t divided by negative s. This is the first one minus okay minus what minus e to the negative s t s squared. You have to find it from zero to b. Okay, again, put this exponential part done and then uh, take care of it. So it's going to be equal to, I put it in this format, a negative s e to the s t. So that would be minus one over s squared e to the s t. I'm going from zero to b. Okay, replace t by b. So that give me negative b, and that's going to be s e to the, okay, s b. This would be minus one over s squared e to the s b. Okay, now minus, when you put the zero, this will disappear. Okay, and the other one would be one over s squared e to the zero. Okay, that last part would be s squared. So it's going to be negative b s e to the s b minus one over s squared e to the s b plus one over s squared. I'll take the limit when b goes to infinity. Again, we force these to be down the denominator, make zero, the final answer would be one over s squared. Okay, so the integral from zero to infinity. And zero to infinity, t e to the negative s t d t. Now it's going to be equal to the limit of Okay, B goes to infinity and the negative B S E to the S B minus one over S squared E to the S B plus one over S squared. Okay. So if you if you put the condition that S to be positive, okay, if S is going to be positive, this would be zero. Not an exponential function down the denominator, make it zero, drop the rule. And this would be zero. Okay, so the result would be one over s squared. With the condition that the s to be positive. That's it. So you prove that the Laplace of t is going to be one over s squared. It's a minus. So if you compare it, you say the Laplace of one, remember the Laplace of t to the zero, if you like, is the Laplace of one which is one over s. If you compare it together, so eventually you arrive at what? Uh, so in general, if you like, you can use induction, okay, or just uh, do it. What is gonna be the Laplace of t to the n? Laplace of t to the n, you see the denominator would be one up. Laplace of one, the power is one that gives s squared. So this is going to be uh, okay, this would be s to the n plus one. And on the top is going to be the, the you know, couple of the multiplication of one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. 
which is going to be n factorial. You know that n factorial is the product of all the numbers up to the n. That's a very popular formula. Laplace of t to the n is n factorial or s to the n plus one. Always the bottom one, you see the, the power is going to be. So for example, if you want to find the Laplace of t squared, it's going to be two factorial over s3. Two factorial is two, so that give it two over s3. So these are going to be used in any differential equation. Okay, we have the formulas. Yes. The constraint is still uh, s greater than zero for this? All of them. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's put it. Yes. Richard. So if you say, for example, you have like a function that has like t to the n and then also adding something like e to the at, you can add those together because like in the integral. After your break, <laughs> you are right. Yes. Yes. After the break, we are going to tell you that the Laplace transform is like differentiation. The reason, if you have done linear algebra, you know that when we say operator means it's a linear function. So the sum goes to the sum, the scalar model. And officially, we're going to, yes, yes, that's true. One property would be Laplace of f of t plus g of t is Laplace of f of t plus g of t. That's why we stop here. We don't need anything else. Everything else, we are going to find it. Okay, have your break. We come back. Nice formula. And as I told you, we give you those formulas, but there are a couple of cases that you have to go through the formula, okay, or prove something for us. So for the rest of the formula, we are going to check uh, some property of the oil of the Laplace transform. Okay. Laplace transform is a linear function. So this is, we are going to investigate a number of the properties, but for the time being, just uh, the linearity, okay? So properties, some of the properties are Laplace transform. Yes, a couple of them will show that the Laplace transform is a linear function. Okay, so the Laplace transform, uh, Laplace transform is a linear function or operator. Linear function or operator. When you say operator, it means linear. Okay, so this means we have to. Okay. The first one, you have a scalar multiplication of the function. You see, Laplace of k, a number, times a function, f of t. k is a scalar times your function, scalar multiplication. So it's like integration. Because you're integrating, we can bring the k out. So it's going to be k times the Laplace of f of t. That will help us. OK, the first part, of course, k is a number. It's the first one. The second property, okay, it's additive, addition goes to addition. So the Laplace, Laplace of f of t plus g of t. Okay, it's going to be Laplace of f of t, Laplace of f of t plus Laplace of g of t. If you use the first one, conclude that the subtraction is going to be the same. That will help us quite a lot. Okay. Help us quite a lot to be able to find the Laplace transform of more functions. We have those standard formulas. So this is how you're going to be questioned. This uh, type of problems, okay. For example, you want to find the Laplace transform of each of these factors. So, evaluate each Laplace transform. 
Laplace. Set up this question on the book. Okay. So the first one, we want to find the Laplace R. Laplace of 3t minus 5 sine of 2t. Okay. We can make it as a difference first, then we can pull out the coefficient. We end up with the Laplace of t, we have it, the formula, one over s squared. And we end up with the Laplace of sine of 2t, we have it around the table. Okay, so this is the way we will draw the solution. Like differentiation, integration. So Laplace of 3t <coughs> minus 5 sine of 2t. Okay, you can rewrite it as a difference. Laplace of the 3t minus Laplace of the 5 sine of the 2t. Now we can pull out the coefficients. So that gives you 3 Laplace of, F, Laplace of t minus 5 Laplace of sine of the 2t. Now we substitute. So it's going to be three times Laplace of t. <coughs> if you know it is one over s squared. Carry your table or just memorize it. These formulas that we need. Okay, minus five. Laplace of the sine. The sine, remember, is a over s squared plus a squared. A is the coefficient of two. Okay, t. A, two over s squared plus uh, two squared, s squared plus four. And these formula are going to be available. <coughs> Laplace of a sine a t, a over s squared plus <coughs> eight. Okay, two coefficient, s squared plus four. So uh, this is going to be equal to the three over s squared minus, okay, minus 10, s squared plus four, it's easy, we can uh, you know, find the common denominator, simplify it. So the common denominator would be s squared times s squared plus four. Top is going to be three times s squared plus four and is 10 s squared. And this is going to be three s squared plus 12 minus 10 s squared over s squared times s squared plus four. And the like terms on the top, and that give us the final answer. Okay, so that give us a negative seven. S squared plus 12. Plus 12 over S squared times S squared plus four. This is the Laplace transform of the three T minus five sine of the two T. Okay, this is the way we're going to operate. It's all algebra from no other. So you have only those formulas, those standard. The rest, you have to find it yourself. Okay, and you're going to see various properties. Any question? Another one, this next one is famous, okay. Sometimes you may have to find the Laplace of the sine <laughs> squared or cosine squared. Double angular formula and do it. Okay, so this is going to be the next example. You want to know what's going to be the Laplace of sine a square of t. You know that your formula gives you sine t, right? it's a sine a square. You can use the double angular formula to change it. Solution. Let's remind you that sine a square of t is equal to the one minus double angle, cosine of the double, two t, two t over two. Now we break it into the one half, minus one half, cosine of the two t. We take a Laplace of both sides. The second one, we can use the linear property of the Laplace transform to find it. You end up with the Laplace of one, which is one over s, and you end up with the Laplace of the cosine, which is S over 
S square plus A square, and then you have. Okay. So take the <coughs> Laplace transform. So the Laplace of sine squared of T is going to be equal to the Laplace of one half. So one half of the cosine of T bracket. <coughs> so the first one would be Laplace of one half. Okay, so, so Laplace of one half. Second one would be minus the Laplace of half cosine of the two T. What are the coefficients? So the first one, one half, you take out the one half. The leftover would be Laplace of one. Not Laplace of one is one S. One over S minus one half Laplace of cosine of the two T. Substitute. So it's going to be one half. Laplace of one. Laplace of one is one over S. Minus one half. Laplace of cosine. Laplace of cosine S over S squared plus A squared. Okay, so it's going to be S. For the sine, we saw the number A and but for the cosine is S. S over S squared plus A squared. A squared, A is the coefficient of the T. It's two, two squared would be four. That's it. Okay, then you can, you know, you can simplify it a little bit and write it down. Uh, the quick way to simplify it, you can pull out the one half and the common denominator and do it, and just do it right away. So I pull out the one half, it's gonna be one over S minus S over S squared plus four. Common denominator, simplify it, and that's going to Simplify inside, that gives you four over S times S squared plus four. Let's do it. Any question? So let's just take care of it. So this is it. So it's going to be equal to the one half. Down the denominator, you just find the common denominator would be S times S squared plus four. And on the top, you get S squared plus four minus S squared. So the S squared and S squared will cancel out. You get the one half times four over S over S squared plus four. Okay, two and four would simplify. So the final answer is going to be two over S times S squared plus four. So that would be Laplace transform of the sine squared. It would be very useful know this one or some of the differential equation that you can see in the future. Okay, so anything else you have to do a little bit of algebra to find it yourself. Okay, you have to use a standard the standard form. Any question? Now these functions are all nice, nice function, but when you are in science, most of the functions that we're going to do are going to be piecewise defined function. Okay, because we do it different things, you know, different steps. We are going to have some formulas for that one too. So we divide the, this uh, concept, this part into two parts really. The first part, we stay with the okay usual function. In the second part, we are going to bring some famous piecewise defined function. We take care of it. But you have to know how you handle the piecewise defined function. So for the time being, so we give you one. And in future, we are going to simplify it. It's unavoidable. We have to use the direct definition to find it. Okay, so we'd like to find the Laplace of f of t. And f of t is this function. f of t is equal to is equal to the zero when t is between zero and three, and is equal to two when t is greater than equal to three. Later on, we have something we call it the unit step function. Okay. Then it's going to be zero, one only. Then we give you the formula. That for the time being, you don't know it. So what you have to do is you have to use the definition to find it. Okay. Because this function is divided in two parts, zero, three, and 
two or bigger than three. So the way you do it, just use the definition, direct definition. Direct method. Okay, so we want to find the Laplace of f of t. And now it's going to be zero to infinity. Zero to infinity, e to the negative st, ft, dt. But we find out that if you want to substitute ft, you have to break it. Because between zero and three, the function is zero. And for three above, the function would be two. So what we do is we break zero to infinity. Break it into this interval. <coughs> go from zero to three and three to infinity. Okay, so it depends. Sometimes the function may be given to you by several equations. So you do the same thing. So we break it into the integral from zero to three. That's it, uh, uh, zero to three, e to the negative st, ft, dt. Zero to three, because this is how the function is given to you. Okay, plus three to infinity. Three to infinity, e to the negative st, ft, dt. Okay, now we're going to substitute. But between zero and three, your function is zero. So this part would disappear, this part would be zero. Okay, but between three and positive infinity, three and positive infinity, your function is three. So in this case, you change it to the three. So basically your integral would be what? So it's gonna be equal to, so we have to find this integral, three to positive infinity. Three to positive infinity, just uh, three e to the negative st dt. So this is the, the way you're going to handle the, this five divine. Now the rest, you know, <coughs> you, you can pull out the three, change it to the limit formula and just do it, or just keep the three. <coughs> so it's going to be equal to the limit of, okay, b goes to infinity, integral from three to b, three e to the negative st dt. Okay, you integrate it. So that give the limit of b goes to infinity, Exponential function never change, but you have to multiply, divide by u prime. With respect to the t would be negative s, negative s. Then uh, t going from, okay, t going from three to three to b. Okay, you can pull this one down and then uh, substitute. So it's gonna be a limit of three on the top, negative three on the top. This is going to be s e to the st, okay, from three to b, and the b goes to infinity. So this is going to be the limit of negative three. This uh, t by b, e to the s b minus minus negative three on the top, s e to the three s, okay, e to the three s, then b goes to positive infinity. So we assume that the S is positive, this would be zero again. Okay, this would be zero and, uh, and that's it. So left over is going to be your answer. So this is going to be equal to negative, negative positive. So that give you three on the S, okay. E to the, that's it. Three over S e to the, e to the three S. This would be the, the Laplace transform of the function. Okay, so the way we are going to, we are going to have a formula later on. We keep these numbers, you don't have to do it. But this is it for the time being, or in case, in case you see something which is going to be quite different, this is the way we're going to do it for the piecewise defined function. But the unit the step function in future, even you don't have to. Do this. Okay, any question? So that is the Laplace transform. So what next? Before getting to the, you see the way we are going to do the differential equation, let's give some idea. We can use, we can use the Laplace transform to solve the differential equation, the linear differential equation with the constant coefficient only. That's the way we do it. Remember you did it with the undetermined uh, coefficient method to be able to do it. <clears throat> the way we do it, we are going to, differential equation will be given to you. You take the Laplace transfer on both sides. 
So it's linear. So you end up with the Laplace of a function. Laplace of the derivative of the function depends. The first derivative, the second derivative, the third, etc. We are going to give you a formula later on, not today. We can find the Laplace transform of derivative any order derivative of a function in terms of the Laplace transform of the function. So when you come back algebra, we put them together at the end of the day, your differential equation would be something like L of F of T on one side and expression of S on the other side. So you can solve your equation if you can find the other way around. If you can find a function F of T on which the Laplace transform is given to you. So you have to do the opposite operation. We call it inverse of the Laplace transform. And everything we did so far is going to be algebra. So what I'm going to do is, before getting to that step, we are going to introduce what is the inverse Laplace transform. How are we going to do it the other way around? So in this case, f of t was given to you. You find f of s. Now f of s was given to you. You have to go back and find the function. You know, some of them are standard. We give you these five formulas. but they are going to simplify it, given to you. It's like partial fraction terms that we did in calculus three or calculus two, of course. Okay, so let's get the definition of the inverse Laplace transform. If you do all the algebra, then we can start solving one differential. Yes. The um the second order nonlinear differential equations when there's like a y or x missing, you have to sub stuff in. You know, it's like u equals y prime. Just the linear. Yeah. Can you use Laplace transforms for those? Some of them, yes. Not all of them, yeah. Yeah, that's transform various applications. And the way we do it, we use it for this one. And in science, again, you are going to have a system of differential equation. See, you are going to do something, you have of t, g of t, and you have to solve that system of Laplace, of system of the equation. You can do it. Laplace transform and combination of linear algebra, that's something nice. Or the nonlinear one, and, and later on, these equations that we saw, you see they are ordinary differential equations because your function is a function of one variable. If the function is going to be a function of two variables, three variables, you know that you're going to have partial, uh, partial derivatives. Then you have partial differential equations. We call it PDE. This is ODE. In the case of the PED, then the Laplace transform will have a special rule over there. But in this course, we just stay with the Okay, okay. Just give an idea, it depends on what you are going to have in, in future, okay? So let's uh, do the reverse order. Okay, what is the inverse Laplace transform, okay? This is your job, because when you, when you do the algebra of a differential equation, all the problems, you never integrate for us, okay? It's all algebra, okay, to put them together. So you have to practice because it takes time. Sometimes to do this type of things. Okay, we're done with the seven one and we are in seven two. Okay, in seven two, we talk about the other way around. Inverse of the Laplace transform, we're going to look inverse of Laplace transform. It's like, you know, you have an operator like in linear algebra, then you want to find the inverse. Of the, but this is inverse of the operation. So let's see how to define inverse uh, function of the Laplace transform. There you are. Suppose at this now, Laplace of f of t is given. Laplace f of t is equal to the f of s. Remember, Laplace transform is a function of s. Is given. Now the other way around, the inverse. Okay, the inverse Laplace transform, Laplace transform is again a function, is denoted by, denoted by, this is the notation that we're going to use, you see, Laplace inverse, Laplace, you want to talk, Laplace inverse of f of s. Laplace of f of t, Laplace inverse of f of s. And is going to be defined by what? And is defined by 
define by, that's it. You see the Laplace of Laplace, Laplace of F of T is equal to the F of S if and only. Laplace inverse of F of S is going to be equal to the F of T. You switch the order. So in the first part, f of t would be given to you, find f of s. In the second part, f of s would be given to you, you want to find the f of t. So we write it down as a Laplace. Okay, again, this is a linear operator. So addition goes to addition, scale of multiplications. Okay, so quickly note that Laplace inverse. Laplace inverse of f of s is a linear operator, linear operator. Linear operator means what? If you have addition, that goes to, you can break it. You can break it, you know, break it into, into parts to get these numbers, uh, okay? Uh, so uh, this is it. Let's, let's do some example to see how we can do it. So you have your formulas. Some of them may be exactly as the formula, but some of them you may have to use this linear operator formula to be able to do it. Okay, I'll give you all the possibilities. So example, that's it. You want to find the, find the given. Given inverse Laplace transfer. That's a transform. Just a stay with the basic. Then they give you some nice one, nice formula that will take care of everything for us, really. Such an ordinary job. Okay, the first one. The first one. What is the Laplace inverse of one over S squared plus 64? You want to find a function whose Laplace transform is one over S squared plus 64. Quickly, you can guess what type of function is this one. Any such a It's going to be sine. If it's an S on the top, it's a cosine. Um, if it's a number on the top, it must be sine. But the formula for the sine is what? A over S squared plus A squared. A squared is 64. So A is eight and eight is missing. You can create it because I told you, Laplace inverse is a linear operator. Which you can divide or multiply by any number you like. This is the way you guess. Okay, solution. This is the way we do it. We say, oh, Laplace inverse of one over S squared plus 60. You compare it with the formula. That's for your information. You see, say, oh, a squared is 64 to the formula. A is eight. I need an eight on the top. So what I do, I divide the, it's like integration. I divide the outside by eight and I multiply the inside, okay, inside of the side. One eight Laplace inverse of, Laplace inverse of what? Eight over S squared plus 64. Okay, it's like when you integrate, it's the same thing. So I need an eight on the top. I divide and the multiply. At the division part, you put it outside. You see like eight and eight, you cancel out. And now you know that. According to our formula, it's gonna be one over eight. This would be the Laplace, inverse, Laplace of the function sine of the eight t. Okay, done. So f of t, if you like, F of t would be one over eight sine of the eight t. So if you find the Laplace of the one over eight sine of the eight t, you arrive at whatever it is given to you. Any questions? So it's no, it's got to be quickly you can find out. If it's got to be cosine, it's got to be s on the top. Okay. So that was uh, the first part. Any question? Let's make it more fun. Okay. The next one. The next one would be fine. Let's see. Laplace inverse R, look at this. 
Uh, this is going to be 10 times s, 10 s over s square plus 60. You see, as soon as you see the s on the top, it must be cosine. But the cosine is s over s square plus a square. 10 is the, you know, when you pull out the 10, it's a linear, okay? So rewrite it, L in Laplace inverse, 10 s, s square plus 16. It's 10 times Laplace inverse of s over s square plus 16. That's it. For the formula for yourself, a square is 16, so a is 4. So this would be equal to the 10 cosine of 14. That's it. This is going to be f of t. I knew that. Okay, getting the row sine and the cosine. Any question? The fun part. Next one. Okay. So what's going to be the next one? Number three. Number three is this one. Laplace inverse. Uh, ES plus five over S square plus seven. What is it? If only S on the top, it can be cosine. It's not yes. Can we break it up into two? Yes, yes. Well, everything is linear. So break it. Oh, this is it. Solution. So it's a Laplace in uh, Vs plus five, S square plus it. Okay, so I break it inside to show you. It's a three times S, S square plus seven. And this is going to be five times S square plus seven. So it's going to be Laplace of the first one. The second one, at the same time, I'm going to pull out the numbers. Okay, it's going to be equal to, let me rewrite it once more. So this is the first one, <coughs> SS square plus seven, okay, plus the second one, five over SS square plus seven. Okay, now pull out those coefficients. You keep it if you need it. Okay, this is out. See nicely, this is cosine. Have a little bit to worry about the second one. You pull up the five. And that be the L inverse of one over S square plus seven. The first one is a straightforward one. It's cosine. Three, cosine of one. Root seven. Root seven. Don't be surprised, root seven of two. What's the missing for the second one? Five. Five over square root seven yeah, sine yes. square root seven. I, I create it first. If you did, you know, we accept that then. Just to explain. Remember, you need an A on the top. But we can do all of them at the same time, we accept that. So that's going to be three cosine of the root seven T plus five root seven sine of the root 70. That's it. I'm done. Okay. There's a couple of more, you know, I can talk about the next time. The other one is if you have to do the partial fractions. Okay. So the uh, what we are going to do, I post your practice quiz. But I want to make sure that you are able to solve one differential equation for this. So I give you that property that we talk about it. Uh, we already we are ready for it. You have to know what is the Laplace of f prime of t in terms of f of t. So, you know, that would help you.